Riding the multiple waves of COVID-19 and getting people vaccinated proved to be a bit of a bumpy road for Mayor John Tory and city officials in 2021. Many would consider the effort a success in getting people double dosed, but it wasn't the only thing on his mind this year. He and I had a chance to sit down and discuss. The task of vaccinating millions of people just in this city was daunting, uh, but we've carried it off. And so, you know, now we're involved in the middle of another, effectively another vaccination campaign to do the boosters. Um, it, it's been a different assignment, and I think it's really important for us to note that notwithstanding the challenge of that, that we are better off at this time. You know, everything that's going on, we're still better off. There's only so much pre-planning you can do in the middle of something like this. and. Uh, the city, the emergency operations center has certainly done as much as possible. That said, there's been a lot of reactionary work that's been done as well. This is an emergency in respect of which there were not answers to many of the questions. And that made it much harder. And so it meant there was a premium placed on the advice of people like Dr. Devilla because she was you know, the closest we had to someone who had answers. And even she would say there were not a lot of answers. So that made it more difficult. We've got an economy here that uh, we need to try and kickstart once again and uh, and you're doing everything you can at this point but what needs to be done to make sure the city continues to operate properly i think we've got to get small business and that's not just underground downtown which is probably the worst problem but it's also on the main streets and in the plazas across the uh, city where you still see papered up you know windows and so on and i think that's going to happen through a period of sort of uninterrupted uh, you know progress as opposed to what we've seen which is progress followed by another uh, wave you know followed by progress followed by another wave it looks like there may be more of a need and they continue to call out for more help. What more can be done? In our own case, we have done some things. We created a small business tax class, which we made sure was uh, applicable in 2022 so that it actually will take effect next year and give a 15 percent you know, reduction to a lot of small businesses. Much of the discussion this year as well, aside from the pandemic, has been about housing. Um, we've talked at length about the initiatives that the city has taken to try and get more affordable housing and temporary housing put in place. Well, we've taken pieces of city land, as I committed to do at the end of the last election, and we've converted that into thousands of units of affordable housing, some under construction, a lot of others approved, thousands of units approved and ready for construction. Can more be done to carry it even further and create even more? Well, it's Despite really the fact that it seems like you're trying yeah, everything you possibly it's can. It's a really interesting question, because if you said to me, what is the answer beyond uh, you know, the inclusionary zoning we've done to say every development has to contain some affordable housing, the programs like using our land to build affordable housing near transit and so on. The other thing that has to happen is that people who live in the city, in neighborhoods, have to accept the fact that it is going to be okay if we do it well, which we can, to say that a big house in a neighborhood could be turned into three flats. Let's look forward. Uh, we've talked about transit projects, uh, what's to come. How do you convince people that the short-term pain is worth the long-term gain? I don't know how you convince them because, of course, when you're in the short-term pain, I mean, any of us are the same. I guess I would say to them, go up to Eglinton next year when that subway opens and the construction is cleared away and we have the magnificence of a subway line that goes from one side of the city to the other, east to west, west to east. And, you know, we're now we're going to do the same uh, with the uh, Ontario line, for example, that runs all the way from Don Mills and Eglinton right down to Ontario Place. The alternative would have been for this city to strangle itself on its own growth and success. And that's, that's a nice thing to be able to say that the city is growing so fast and is so successful that you have massive problems with traffic and the environment and families and, you know, loss of productivity. It's not the answer. The answer is to build transit. We're going to do it. And that does involve pain, as you say, short term pain for long term gain. You've got a year ahead, which involves an election. You've said to this point that you still have time to think about whether or not you're going to run for re-election. I'm curious to know what goes into that decision. What do you have to consider? You've got to have, first of all, a discussion with yourself and sort of say, look, you know, do, do you, are you still excited by the job? Are you still challenged by the job? Are there some things you have left to do? Uh, you know, then if you pass over that hurdle, you have to have a discussion with your family. And I mean, I, I'm the same as everybody else because in the end, you don't want to sort of overstay your welcome. I, I'm the last person that wants to do that. I've had a wonderful career and I've had a wonderful time in this job, which I consider a complete privilege to have it. Um, and I enjoy it immensely, but you know, so, so you have that discussion and it all sounds, you know, but that's just the truth. I mean, and, and you got to have the time though to go through that carefully and properly and decide what you do. And I'll do that not too long into the new year, but I got to have the time and I just haven't taken it.